Today's video is brought to you by Robin Hood. Ooh da lolly. Hey brother! Ben, what in the name of Merlin's pants is the deal with Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel? Because if you just sort of gloss over it, I feel like you can get to the end of the first book, sort of assuming that the two were just old chums who worked on and created the Philosopher's Stone together. After all, on his Chocolate Frog card, one of the things Dumbledore is specifically known for is his work in alchemy with his partner, Nicholas Flamel. And the thing Nicholas Flamel is famous for is making the Philosopher's Stone. In fact, I think you could argue the entire point of alchemy alchemy was to ever create the stone. Here's the definition. The medieval forerunner of chemistry, based on the supposed transformation of matter, it was concerned particularly with attempts to convert base metals into gold or to find a universal elixir. In other words, exactly what we know the stone to be able to do. The problem is that, of course, by the end of the first book, we learn that Nicholas Flamel is already well over 600 years old, meaning he would have created the stone centuries before he ever even met Albus Dumbledore. You don't look a day over 375. And since the stone itself is sort of the end-all be-all goal of alchemy, what on earth could Flamel and Dumbledore have done together some 500 years later that Flamel couldn't have just done himself. Do you see how it doesn't add up? Do you know how crazy that drives me? Of course you do. I mean, I assume that's why you're subscribed to this channel, or if you're not, why you should, or at least ding that bell, you know. Anyway, today we are gonna figure out what these two did together and what it has to do with one Credence Barebone. Guys, 2020 is the perfect time to be thinking about 2040, because let's face it, not all of us have our very own Philosopher's Stone to turn all of our regular boring metals into gold. But with Robinhood, you can invest in the markets and earn interest with the competitive APY on uninvested cash. They make it easy to get started and learn as you grow with an intuitive app experience and no commission fees on trades. And stock prices do not have to hold you back. You can buy a piece of a company you love for as low as $1 and slowly build your portfolio over time. You can buy one share, half a share, nine and three quarters shares. It's really up to you and your budget and your goals. Plus your first stock is on the house when you set up your account. So head over to scbros.robinhood.com to claim your first free stock today. Again, that is scbros.robinhood.com. Set up your account today and get a free stock. Annual percentage yield APY on invested cash is paid by program banks and is variable. Robinhood Financial is not a bank. The free stock offer is subject to terms conditions, all investments involve risk, other fees that may apply, visit rbnhd.co slash fees. Boring legal stuff. <laughs> yeah. Here's the curious thing about the Philosopher's Stone. The two powers it's always described as having in Harry Potter are that it can turn other metals into gold and that it can produce the elixir of life. Both of which seem pretty straightforward. One makes you rich and the other lets you live forever, which feels like a pretty ideal situation. And honestly, I don't think Flamel is using the stone correctly because we get to see his house in Crimes of Grindelwald and it is like in shambles for someone who can create gold at will. And honestly, he doesn't exactly seem like the picture of health. He is like alive, but mostly what I could say about him is that he's not dead. He just seems so brittle. Hey, Mr. Flamel. Oh, I'm sorry. Either way, despite those being the only two known powers of the stone, Dumbledore goes out of his way in the first Harry Potter book to make sure that Voldemort does not get the stone because he thinks he'll be able to use it to restore himself a body. But my question is, why is he concerned about that? Because that's not really a known power of the stone. Right? I mean, certainly you don't want Voldemort to have it no matter what, because it would be an excellent tool in terms of gathering resources and guaranteeing that he doesn't die. But to that end, Voldemort already can't die. And even if Dumbledore hasn't quite figured off how he's pulling it off yet, the fact that he's existed as like spirit vapor for the last 11 years must be suggesting to him that in some way Voldemort has found a way to tether himself to life. So yeah, why is Dumbledore so concerned this is gonna restore him to like full power? I mean, he knows Flamel, he knows he's mostly just not dead. I'm alive. 
but I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. Unless, perhaps, Dumbledore has seen this kind of magic from the stone before. Personally, I totally think he has, and I think the answer to this mystery and many other mysteries lie with this specific power of the stone. But in order to explore them, we need to first travel back to Dumbledore's youth. We know from Elpheus Doge's In Memoriam about Dumbledore that almost the moment he arrived at Star... St Star Wars. <laughs> The moment he arrived at Hogwarts, he was a star pupil that not only did he win every prize of note that the school offered, he was soon in regular correspondence with the most notable magical names of the day, including Nicholas Flamel, the celebrated alchemist, Bethilda Bagshot, the noted historian, and Adelbert Waffling, the magical theoretician. Which is important because it is proof that Dumbledore was in contact with Flamel before he graduated Hogwarts, which matters because of what happens to him almost as soon as he graduates Hogwarts, which is the death of his mother, Kendra. Kendra's death grounded Dumbledore's immediate ambitions upon graduating of traveling the globe with his friend, Elpheus. And more importantly, tied him to Godric's Hollow for that summer to care for his younger siblings, Aberforth and Ariana. His sister, Ariana, I'm sure you will recall, was largely kept at home. She didn't attend school and has all but been confirmed to have developed an Obscurus after being attacked by several Mogul boys as a little girl. We have a full video explaining this. If you want to check that out, you can do so by clicking the card. But the important passage is this. It destroyed her what they did. She was never right again. She wouldn't use magic, but she couldn't get rid of it. It turned inward and drove her mad. It exploded out of her when she couldn't control it. And at times she was strange and dangerous, but mostly she was sweet and scared and harmless. And in case you need a refresher, magic that turns inward and explodes out of you in an uncontrollable way is pretty much the definition of an Obscurus. But back to Albus Dumbledore. The other reason that summer in particular was so important is because it was during those two months that he met and developed a very close friendship with one Galette Grendelwald, who he shared almost everything with. You and Grindelwald were his closest brothers. Oh, we were closer than brothers. Sure, I said his name wrong. Gillette, whatever. Jellert? Jellert. Jellert. You Jellert? <laughs> you Jellert Grindelwald? Grindelwald? Sadly, those two months ended with Albus, Aberforth, and Grindelwald having a three-way duel which resulted in the death of Ariana. Which brings us back to Albus's pre-existing relationship with Nicholas Flamel and the fact that Ariana had an Obscurus. Now, we see in Fantastic Beasts that it is possible to keep an Obscurus outside of a human host. Newt has one in that little bubble thing. And we also know that Dumbledore was absolutely distraught after after the death of his sister, never really knowing if he himself had done it. So our theory is that perhaps without even realizing really what it was after Ariana's death, that Dumbledore reached out to Nicholas Flamel to see if they could use the stone on what was actually her Obscurus to try and heal her or just see what they could make happen. So together they used the stone on the Obscurus, the little floating black cloud, to try and restore store a body to Ariana and surprise surprise it actually works in terms of restoring a body to this thing it's just that it's not Ariana instead they created a little baby boy who we know as Credence. Now, this is where things get a little bit foggy, but I have to imagine that once they realized they created a brand new life, they would have realized they were in a very unknown area of magic. Possibly very dark and certainly outside their area of expertise. That said, we know that both Flamel and Dumbledore had lots of very important magical contacts across the world and that one of them must have been in America because one way or another, they put that baby on a boat 
heading to America. I mean, we literally see Flamel have a conversation with Eulalie Hicks, who we know is a charms professor at Ilvermorny. Now, I agree, sending this baby away to America without accompanying it themselves sounds irresponsible, but I would also bet that Dumbledore would admit he was pretty irresponsible. Or, as ever with Dumbledore, he would think that he was indeed acting in the baby's best interest by not accompanying it. That somehow, by keeping his distance from it and not drawing attention to this new little baby, he was giving it a better chance of survival. I thought by distancing myself from you, you might be more protected. Certainly, at least I can see how a very famous wizard showing up in America with an unexplained baby he created with unexplained magic shortly after the death of two of his family members would look maybe a little bit sketchy. Whatever his concerns or reasons for not accompanying the baby, though, seem to have been pretty short-lived because the baby is assumed to have died on its way to America. Or at least that's what everyone thinks, no one realizing that Lita Lestrange actually switched the baby with her brother. Fast forward 20 years or so though, and the baby has grown up to become Credence, a boy full of mysteries. Where did he come from? How was he able to survive with an Obscurus for so long when no other child ever has? Why did a phoenix appear to him as if he was a Dumbledore? And how on freaking earth does Grindelwald know what his name is? Aurelius Dumbledore. Or else, why does he assign him the name Aurelius and believe him to be a Dumbledore? All of these questions are answered if, in fact, Dumbledore and Flamel use the stone on Ariana's Obscurus and accidentally created Credence. How has Credence survived for so long with an Obscurus when most kids who suffer this condition die at an early age? Because he is the reverse of most children with this condition. He wasn't a child with a body that acquired an Obscurus, he was an Obscurus that acquired a body. Dumbledore tells Newt that there's a legend in his family that a phoenix will appear to a Dumbledore in need, and then later in the movie, a phoenix appears to Credence, seemingly proving that he's a Dumbledore. Which, of course, seems to make no sense, because how on earth could Dumbledore not realize he had another brother? And the answer is that Credence counts as a Dumbledore because the Obscurus he was made from originally came from Ariana, and even though Dumbledore had a hand in Credence, creating Credence, he has no idea that he's still alive because he believed that baby died at sea. And then there's the name. Aurelius. Like, why Aurelius of all things? Well, and some of you may already know this, but the name Ariana means silver, and the name Aurelius means gold. And what was the other power of the Philosopher's Stone? Ah, yes. To turn any other metal into gold. Credence is the result of the Philosopher's Stone giving Ariana's Obscurus a body, the same way that future Dumbledore is afraid Voldemort will use the stone to give himself a body. And in a fitting twist of fate and a cunningly disguised bit of foreshadowing, their names, Ariana and Aurelius, also reflect the stone's other power to turn any metal into gold. And that is our theory for the creation of Credence AKA Aurelius Dumbledore. Honestly, I really feel like it fits together extremely well and would love to hear your thoughts about it. If you agree, disagree, let us know in the towel section down below. It also helps explain why the Fantastic Beast movies introduced Nicholas Flamel at all, because thus far he didn't really do anything and I think has mostly been considered kind of a letdown. Plus, they give you such a nice glamour shot of the stone itself, and if it doesn't come into play, then it's just kind of boring fan service. And besides that, how great would it be to actually see the stone in action. I mean, the entire first Harry Potter book is all about it, and you learn all about its powers only to eventually see it do absolutely nothing. 
Guys, we are brewing up some seriously cool things for Carlin Brothers Coffee in 2020. If you want to make sure you're up to date on all of that, head over to carlinbrotherscoffee.com right now, pick yourself up a bag of coffee, and sign up for that email list. Link is in the description down below. Guys, thanks so much as always for watching. Please remember to like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see how Ariana had an obscure, so you can check out this video right here, or if you want to see how Harry himself is actually the Philosopher's Stone, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all we got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.